Mina san konnichiwa, Makai Zaku desu. Welcome back, and thank you for joining me today. And thank you for all your likes and subscriptions and comments. In a few of your comments, you've asked me how I study Japanese or kanji, and what learning materials I have used both in and outside of school. As you know, I am a full time student studying Japanese here in Fukuoka, Japan, and today's video will focus on how to improve your Japanese, specifically kanji. So I'll discuss how to start, how to develop, and how to become proficient in kanji, and how I've come to reach my current level of kanji understanding, what practices I have used, and what materials I've used and recommend. And there are timestamps in the description if you want to jump ahead or review anything along the way. So let's begin. So let's start with a brief description of what kanji is. When studying Japanese, kanji are the basis of the Japanese educational curriculum. Of course, you may know that Japanese has different writing systems, kanji being one of them, another one being hiragana, and one being katakana. But writing in kanji or kanji characters has the characteristic that is easier to convey the meaning of the word itself. And or the entire sentence instead of just writing hiragana or katakana alone. Learning kanji means being able to read and write and understand Japanese. In addition, each kanji has a meaning. And like I said, if you come across a sentence in Japanese, by understanding what the kanji is, you can understand the meaning behind that sentence. Even if you don't fully understand what that word or sentence might be, you can understand the broad explanation of it just by knowing the kanji alone. And thus, you can understand Japanese. And that's why kanji is so important. For example, let's have a look at this kanji. It's actually two characters. One of them is kuruma, which is car. And the other one, if you look at it closely, actually has that same kanji, car, in it. Just a little smaller, and it kind of looks like it's got its own roof around it. So if you know the kanji for car, kuruma, and you see this second kanji, which kind of looks like, I don't know, a car with a roof over it, like a car house, kind of, you would probably guess that it means garage. And this kanji is pronounced shako, which means garage in Japanese. So now, by recognizing that character, you can associate that to understand that it probably means car or automobile or vehicle in other uses of that kanji. So, of course, now the question has emerged how to learn kanji. Which materials are recommended for mastering it? And here in this video, I will reveal that for you. So, first, I mentioned hiragana and katakana. These are two distinct writing systems used in Japanese for a basic understanding of the language. So, these alphabets serve as the foundation for understanding kanji and Japanese. Basically, they represent the language's phonetic sounds, which are essential for reading and writing Japanese. So, once you've mastered hiragana, katakana, and some basic vocabulary, you can begin to introduce kanji into your studies. There are many ways and resources to help you master these alphabets. I'll include some in the description. So next is learn radicals. So start by learning simple radicals. And radicals are the individual or multiple strokes that kanji are comprised of. So let me give you an example of some common radicals. This radical is the radical for water. So when you see this radical, you can then begin to recognize that the rest of the kanji or even the sentence or word might resolve and resemble something to do with water. For example, umi is ocean or sea. And this kanji, nami, is wave or waves of the ocean. And this kanji, namida, is tears. So each of these resembles something to do with water. And this radical is the radical for water. Let's give another example. Ki is the radical for tree or wood. Mura is village. Tsukue is desk. And mori is forest. As you can see, it has multiple trees. Okay, one more. This is the radical for person. Samurai is a samurai. Karada is body. And seitai is a living organism. So those all have to do with body and living, but not life. That's this kanji. So once you understand hiragana and katakana and you've begun to introduce kanji into your world, how do you actually start to learn kanji and recognize it? One of the first learning recommendations I have for you today is learn via flashcards and spaced repetition. Most learners of kanji that I have met, including me, have stated physical flashcards and smartphone apps as the easiest and most effective way of recognizing, practicing, and memorizing kanji. And that's how I started my kanji journey as well. Flashcards are great. They are highly effective. You can make your own, customize them, and add other notes or triggers, and adjust the level of difficulty or anything else along the way while you study. However, 
Tactile flashcards can be time-consuming to prepare and keep track of. Thankfully, there are digital-based flashcards which you can use all the same. So these apps make it easier to manage and begin right away. Apps have pre-made sets of kanji flashcards to help you progress through the different levels of kanji, from easily recognizable ones and up through more complex and more advanced kanji. Many apps are free to evaluate and try, and may offer practice trials to begin with. Therefore, if you have a smartphone, your kanji learning journey can begin with very few tools or excuses. Plus, with kanji learning apps, they are very convenient and can be brought anywhere you go on the bus, on your break at work, or waiting in line at the Kisa Ten. Apps are engaging, fun, they're productive, and most of them track your progress or even gamify your learning experience. One such app I enjoy is Mochi Kanji, Learn Japanese, an app for learning kanji and Japanese vocabulary. Following an initial flashcard model, Mochi Kanji enhances your learning experience by going beyond just the basic flashcards. Mochi Kanji offers interesting quizzes for new words or kanji, to help you remember those new kanji more easily. As you can see, there are images for association, and what's also great is that mochi kanji is fully vocal. You can listen to pronunciations and even tap the speaker to hear a word back as many times as you like. So you can also repeat and understand how the kanji is meant to be pronounced. As you can see, there are different levels and learning courses covering N5 up to N2, and different specified topics such as IT or nursing or shopping at the grocery store. So in Mochi Kanji, you can actually select your level of understanding to begin with. So whatever level of kanji that you're comfortable with, you can choose that in the app, and also the materials that you may have used in your Japanese learning up to this point. At my Japanese language school, Genki Jacks, here in Fukuoka, for my classes, we use the Mina no Nihongo series of books. And Mochi Kanji allows me to select Mina no Nihongo as my most familiar study materials. Then Mochi Kanji tailors the learning experience to introduce you to new kanji, whilst memorizing it, writing it, using it, and most importantly, understanding it. So I mentioned before about space repetition. Mochi Kanji is perfect for that. The special feature of the Mochi Kanji app is called Golden Time. This feature is based on space repetition, an effective learning model that involves reviewing knowledge and increasing intervals over time. Based on your own learning history, Mochi Kanji will calculate and will remind you to revise new words and kanji at the golden time. This is the time when your brain can memorize best. And there are different levels of memorization. So each word that you learn is divided into five levels of memorization. So from level one are newly learned words and up to level five, which are words now in your long-term memory. And you can check your level of learned words at any time in the digital notebook. So it's not all flashcards. There's little conversations as well that are in the app. So this is great for practicing daily conversation. You'll have conversations with Mochi and Michi, which will increase your reflexes and gain more input in Japanese communication. And then there's the Mochi garden. Mochi Kanji helps you keep your learning routine and motivation with the Mochi Garden. Plant virtual trees and take care of them by achieving your specific goal. So as you check in daily or you're learning new words, you can plant newly in your garden and water them daily. Watch them grow and track your progress along the way. What's more, you can also look up new words on this app by typing hiragana, katakana, romaji, and kanji in the J dictionary. Ano. Ano hito. You can also save them for review later. Mochi Kanji is super fun and I do recommend it. Mochi Kanji is a great tool to help you develop your kanji knowledge and it should be used in tandem with other study materials. If you're interested in this app, you can download it from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store or even use the Mochi Kanji website. You can find the download to the app and the website in the description. This video is sponsored by Mochi Kanji, so thank you to Mochi Kanji for sponsoring this video. So next is learn via textbooks. For me, I find it very difficult to just sit and study in any fashion if I'm not engaged. And some methods just don't match the same way. That's not to say nothing else works. However, I have over time found what works for me. And the next recommendation I have for you is good old fashioned textbooks. As I mentioned, in my current Japanese classes, my school, Genki Jacks, uses the Mina no Nihongo series of books. I've enjoyed using these books as the lessons are short and come in a series. Meaning that one book will focus on new words and vocabulary, kotoba to tango, 
and then introduces structures and sentences using those new words. In the series, and matching the same level, is listening, reading, and of course, kanji. Each chapter coincides with the other books in the series, so you are using repetition and the structures introduced to actually use the language and recognize how to use the new vocabulary and kanji in useful sentences. So there are quizzes and practices and the answers are in the back of the book so you can do self-check and these books are incredibly useful. And one of the books we use is this kanji book. So this book is quite fun for practicing writing, stroke order, recognizing how kanji is used, quizzes, and how radicals are combined to form new or familiar kanji. So there are thousands of textbooks for practicing kanji, maybe a thousand and two. And I'm biased for the Mina no Nihongo books because I'm currently using them and I can vouch for them. And I am familiar enough to say that they have helped me. So let's get on to the next topic to help you really master kanji. So perhaps you had spelling tests in grade school. Your sensei had you write the words again and again, 10 or 20 times, so you can memorize how it was spelt and remember which letter came after the next. Kanji learning is no different. Kanji is a series of strokes, and I find that by reviewing the kanji by writing it multiple times really helps me to memorize it and recognize it in the real world. So using flashcards or apps like Mochi Kanji and the textbooks I have mentioned, you can practice and memorize the stroke order so that when it comes to read or write it, you will know its meaning. You will also begin to easily see how the radicals are used to form kanji and their meanings. This of course will help you become more proficient in writing, as the more you practice kanji and the strokes, the faster you can write it and recall it. There are so many resources to use. And Mochi Kanji allows you to practice tracing and drawing kanji from N5 to N2, step by step to help you memorize those kanji, the stroke order, easily and effectively. The textbooks I mentioned have areas where you can trace and write kanji again and again. You can also search online for printable kanji practice sheets. Use the stroke order in the materials I've mentioned and just write out the kanji over and over again. You'll be a kanji master if you commit the time and effort. All right, so those are my three methods of practicing kanji. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know what you think. Have you used any of these methods? Which others do you recommend and have been effective for you? Again, you can download Mochi Kanji Learn Japanese for free in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Try it out. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscription. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimasu.